everyone, my name is Jacob Fry. Jakob Frey. I'm an animation student at the Film Academy right now and um, I'll be doing my diploma this year in March 2014 and yeah, I'm just here to show you some little tricks and tips for Maya. What I noticed during um, a lot of projects where I animated here at the Film Academy is um, that a lot of people don't know how to use the placer or the world node of rig properly and um, the thing is every rig usually has like this big node at the ground where you can just like move everything around. When your character is an IK, let me actually go to IK for a sec, then you can move the legs up and down easily, Oops, come on, up and down, and a lot of people like when they want to jump the, uh, the character with IK legs, they're sometimes too lazy, it happens to me actually also a lot of times I'm too lazy for stuff, but they start like instead of moving this, uh, the center of gravity and all separate leg controllers up because I mean that's that kind of gets tedious in a while that you if you have a character with like in this case the dog with three legs you just have to move every IK controller up uh, independently uh, what they do they just like oh I can just go ahead and move the world node up and down and so it saves me time so I can just like only animate one controller instead of four but um, in this case it doesn't help because you kind of lose the purpose of of an IK controller you always want to have the control of just like this one controller going up and down. Once you start animating two of them, you kind of lose track of like which controller is now responsible for the impact when it comes back to the ground. So um, the, what the world now is really used used for is just for setting up your scene at the beginning. Like for for instance, like I have my camera right now here and it's facing. Oh, I can I can actually not show it. It's shooting diagonal. So and if I go into my, my camera. Now if I want to have control of the character, of him actually going in screen space, left and right, like if I want to only control this direction on, on the X with one, one curve, I pretty much just point my placer, go into the top view, and I look at my camera, and then I try to point this controller pretty much straight at the camera. So by doing this, I create a new uh, coordinate system. Now if I, if I take the, the COG node and I want to move it left and right, I can pretty much, if you look at my inputs in the, in the channel box, it, it only goes, it only now uses the X for this uh, direction. If I would have done it before, pointing the placer in its uh, regular position, if I wanted to have gone like parallel to the camera, I would have needed to animate it in X and Z. When I set up a shot, I really want to make sure that this placer is pointing the direction where the dog is running most of the time, or the character. Like, uh, so you have to be aware of like what's my character doing, where do I need to control him, and um, so for instance now, if I just want the dog running towards the camera, I can pretty much just key him and move him in Z towards the camera, even though this is now happening over two axes, but since the placer is pointing the direction and all the other controls are laying below the placer, I only animate one axis now, so it saves you animating two. Which can actually be really annoying once you when you want to make a character run in a direction, but you have like two curves being responsible for this direction. It's, uh, it, they start to like jiggle very easily. So that's why you, like once I actually like point this placer towards the direction, I leave it there and I actually, I haven't included it in any of my selection sets because I don't want to move it any, anymore, I don't want to select it anymore, it just stays for the entire shot like that. It actually saves a lot of time in the end. Um, I hope that was uh, somewhat useful, understandable. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching our first tutorial. Did you already use the placer node correctly? Please comment, share and subscribe to not miss any of our animation tutorials, news, talks and lectures. Click the video on the left to check out our very own online animation school that may or may not have been an April Fool's joke. The video on the right discusses what was going on last month in the world of animation. We look at some cartoon reboots and a frog explains the uncanny valley.